Hi guys, Drew's here. I am here to film a new video for you guys today. It is, the countdown is on for my birthday. There's three days till my birthday at the day I'm filming this and I'm gonna be uploading this video. Today's video is very exciting. It's finally time for my May wrap up 2021. Um, the month of May was actually a weird reading month for me. I read some great books. I read some middle grade. I read some graphic novel. I read some romances, some contemporary, some fantasy. I completed two series. Yeah, two series. We'll get to my stats in a few minutes. Um, yeah, May was an interesting month. But before we get to my reading wrap up, uh, my monthly wrap up, I wanted to talk about the book I'm currently reading. I don't know where I'm at in the book currently, but my bookmark says I'm 55 pages in, and that is, I'm currently reading The Guest List by Lucy Foyle, or Foley, I forgot how they said it in the audiobook. Um, the Guest List is an adult mystery thriller that I had on my TBR since last year. This is one of my book of the month picks for the month of April, and I just am now getting to it this year. Uh, this is, I'm reading this because I'm trying to complete my five-star prediction TBR number two, which I'll leave up above or down below if you want to check it out. Um, I'm almost done with my list. I have the guest list, Never Night, and the Fire Keeper left on my list. So I have three books left. Technically, I have two books left since I'm currently reading this one, but I have two books left after, and then after those two books, I will make a whole new list. I seems like you guys love number one and number two videos that I did, so we will get a third one sometimes this summer. Um, really enjoying it, super fast paced, and if this is about a wedding that takes place on an exclusive island, um, and they all have secrets and all have motive, but one of them is a murderer, um, and it just sounds so good. And everyone's been loving this book recently, so I'm so excited to finally getting around to it. So. Hopefully I'll finish it in the month of June. I know I will because the audiobook says I have about four hours left if I'm listening to it on double time or double speed. So I'm really excited to finish this one soon and give you my thoughts and details in my June wrap up, which I haven't even made a June TBR yet, but that's going to be my next video. So this is on my June TBR as well. So there we go. A little sneak peek to my June TBR. <laughs> um, so we have that and now let's get into our reading stats as always I always do my page count first and then I'll tell you how many star ratings there are and all that so my page count for this month was 4,527 pages my smallest book of the month was the runaway graphic novel volume 3 that was a total of 136 pages and then my biggest book of the month, I was tied between two of them. Let me grab them. I was tied between two of the books because these two books was the biggest on my DBR or on my wrap up. And that is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Yes, I finally read this. We'll talk about this in later on in the video. And then I finally read Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo, the second and final installment in this duology. Um, both of these were 596 pages, so I made them tie together. Um, and I was going to do picking my favorite book, but that's really hard because I really enjoyed both of these. Um, but we'll talk more about these in a few minutes. So uh, that was my page count. Let's get on with my stats and all that. I had zero one stars, zero two stars, two of these with three star reads, four, uh, five of these with four star reads. Five of these were five star read. Ten of these were audiobooks. Two of these are ARCs. Three of these I buddy read. Two of these are completed series. Two are graphic novel. Two are library books. Two of these were physical reads. Eight of these was 2021 new releases. Zero Owl Crate. And seven of these books were on my TBR. And I managed to read a total of 13, 12 books this month. I can't even remember managed to read a total of 12 books this month, which is fantastic because I had a little bit of a reading slump in the beginning of the month or at the end of April leading into May is what I should say. Um, so the first two books I want to talk about together because it's by the same author and I've already talked about one of them. And this series is actually really hard to talk about without spoiling what happens in it. But I 
finally completed the Kingdom of Scars duology by Leigh Bardugo. This is the spin-off series to the Six of Crows series and the Grishaverse. Um, I'm so happy I finally got around to reading this. This has been on my TBR since like March, so it's been on my TBR for like two months. But I I read Kingdom of Scars last year, but it was actually part of my five star prediction TBR number one, and I give this four out of five stars. And again, I still give it four out of five stars. There's just something about having like multiple characters that it doesn't interest me in this world anymore. But like with this one, I loved it a lot. This one was a five star read. I'm so happy I picked the Rule of Wolves for our Queer Reads book club. If you want to join Queer Reads book club, I'll leave a link to that down below. Uh, go follow our Instagram account and it will all be down below what we're buddy reading and all that. So um, really happy I read these. Don't really want to talk much about this series because it is a spin-off series and I don't want to spoil you guys of what happened. Just know we follow Nikolai and Nina and um, we have a lot of our favorite characters back in this book. It felt like Avengers Endgame when I was reading this book if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, four stars and five stars, really great books. I love them on audio. I listened to both these and yeah, it was just a fantastic series and I cannot wait to read more by Lee Bardugo soon. I don't even know where to put them. <laughs> the next book I read was an ARC that I had. Uh, I got this ARC sent to me by Wednesday Books. So thank you so much, Wednesday Books. And that is Hurricane Summers by Asha Bromfield. Bromfield. I'm so sorry if I burped your name. Look at this beautiful cover. Now, this was one of my main new releases that I was really looking forward to. So I had an e-arc of this from NetGalley, but I don't really like reading e-books because they give me a headache. Um, but I requested this from Wednesday Books and they so kindly sent this my way. And I read this right before the release date and I actually finished it the day it was released. And I'm so excited to go out to the bookstore this weekend and buy myself a physical copy of this one. Um, Hurricane Summer follows our main character named Talia um, and every six months she has to leave her hometown to go to Jamaica and that's where her dad's side of the family is from and when we even went to well when we went to Jamaica uh, we uh, meet her dad's side of the family and their language the way that they speak is very different from the way that you and I would normally speak um, so it's kind of hard to understand when I was physically reading this one uh, I physically read a little bit of this and then once the audiobook came out in the world I started listening to the audio and it was narrated by the author and the author did a well a really good job of narrating it and having different voices for all the characters um, there was romance in here that I was kind of expecting, but not really expecting. Um, there was also trigger warnings. I forgot what they were. Um, I'll leave my review that I left on Goodreads down below. I believe there was trigger warnings for abuse, uh, homophobic, and cutting yourself and, um, what is it? Cutting yourself? Yeah, cutting yourself and all that. So definitely trigger warnings. It's definitely not a light-hearted contemporary book like I thought it would be, but overall I really enjoyed it. The A couple of um, Talia's family members from Jamaica was kind of rude to her and I didn't really like that aspect of it. I don't know why they were being just so rude to her when she's from a different place and don't know the house rules and all that. Um, but yeah, it says sometimes the storm is inside of you and that's such a beautiful quote. And this was also the author's debut novel, so well done, Asha. Um, and I can't wait to read more from this author and I definitely need to go buy a finished copy because I've seen it. I already saw it at Target um, and I almost bought it twice when I was at Target in the month of May, but I just don't know why I didn't want to buy it. I think it's because I'm like, oh, I already have the ARC, so I don't need to buy a physical copy, but I want to buy a physical copy to support the author and have it on my beautiful bookshelf. And so, yeah, that's what I will be doing in the month of June. And if you guys haven't read this book yet and you're intrigued by this cover, definitely pick it up. It's one of my favorite contemporaries of this year. Um, the next book I read was an, uh, 
was Runaway Volume 2. I actually reread re this book. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. It was such a fun reread. Graphic novels, I read them like a day or two. So it was such a quick, easy read. And this was non. This is also part of a series, so it's also hard to talk about. Uh, but it's by Rainbow Rowell, who's adapting them. And I loved each and every volume. I'm currently reading Volume 4 as well. Um, so hopefully I'll talk more about the Runaway series in my June wrap up. So moving on, I went and decided to pick up House of Hollows by Crystal Sutherland. Um, this is another debut novel that came out this year. Look at this gorgeous cover. Like these cover games this year are amazing. Um, House of Hollows is a YA mystery thriller and it's such a fantastic read. This one has been getting a lot of hype up to its publication date and it definitely deserves all the hype it gets. I really enjoyed this one. I give this one a four out of five stars and the way that this one ended, I was really shocked. It feels like it ended, oh, it's like an open ended enough to where she, the author can write a sequel to this and I really hope she writes a sequel uh, or at least like from a different character's point of view. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Um, House of Hollows follows these three hollows, these three sisters, and um, it follows Iris Hollow, who her two older sisters disappear into these woods, and they never come back, and so it's just a mystery of how they disappeared and why they aren't coming back. Um, there's also uh, trigger warnings in here for uh, alcohol and abuse. Those are two trigger warnings that I could find when I was reading this book. Again, this is one of my an arc I have but I bought a physical copy at Target because I was just like I can't pass up this uh, cover so thank you Penguin Teen for sending me an arc of this and I really can't wait to read this uh, or I can't wait to read more from this author I already read it four out of five stars definitely a great audiobook to listen to and definitely one I will recommend for people who want more mystery thriller books in their collection uh, also it's a super short read so I feel like it's a perfect like summer read as well so really enjoyed this four out of five stars and i really suck at summer reads i'm so sorry uh the next book i read was hello crew heart by maureen johnson this is part of the new like disney this is one of disney newest books for the cruella movie so if you know anything about cruella you know that um she's our evil main character who's not so evil in the beginning because she's a little kid sorry if you hear any background noises there's a truck outside apparently um but um this follows cruella as she goes up from being 12 year old up to whatever age she was when she became cruella and when she hates the dogs um this one i was sadly disappointed by just because i love maureen johnson's writing but this book I is something I wasn't expecting. I think I was expecting the movie, like I pitched in the 100 and Donation movie in my head and that's not what we got. Um, so I give this one three out of five stars and I don't own this book anymore because I borrowed it from my public library and I've already returned it. So there's that. Um, the next one I also don't have because I borrowed it from my library and that was Runaway Volume 3. Like I said, this is the third installment of the series and I can't really talk much about this one either except the artwork in here was amazing, the writing in here was amazing. I give this one four out of five stars and I'm gonna jump into the next book because sequels in general are hard for me to talk about. Uh, the next book I was a little disappointed by to be honest. Uh, it's one of my highly anticipated reads of 2021. This is a YA contemporary co short story collection about Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare and so I read That Way Madness Lies by, edited by Delilah Alder. She's the same author who edited the His Hideous Heart, duel or not duology, <laughs> uh, companion story. And with short stories, it's always hard to figure out if you would love them or hate them. And this one I didn't necessarily hate because uh, hate is a strong word. But I give this one like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. My favorite stories in here uh, were Brittany Cavallo, Cavallero, sorry, <laughs> Patrice Codwell um, story, Emily Webberly's and Austin Sigma Broca's, Kirsten White story, and of course Delilah Alder's story. I really enjoyed those 
stories that I just mentioned. Other authors in here are Kay Ingram, Lily Anderson, Melissa Basado, A.R. Capetta, and Corey McCarthy, Joy McLaughlin, Samantha Mar Marby, Mike Shiro, Lindsay Smith, and then Tochi Onobuchi, Anna Marie Muckamore, Patrice Cadwell, and that's all the authors I already mentioned. Um, I really enjoyed this collection. I give this three and a half out of five stars. If you know anything about Shakespeare, uh, this is literally just a reimagining of a Shakespeare story. But there's some sci-fi elements, there's some contemporary, there's some fantasy. Um, and overall, it wasn't my favorite book I read this month. It's definitely one I was disappointed by. But I would definitely recommend this if you are a Shakespeare fan. Um, it just says 15 celebrated authors put a modern spin on the William Shakespeare beloved classic for a new generation. So if you want to get into Shakespeare, maybe read his original works first and then read these because uh, these are so fun. It took me like a day or two to read them and I definitely enjoyed the audiobook because they were narrated all by the authors themselves. So that was really fun. Um, so 3.5 out of 5 stars and I'm going on to the next book. Um, the next book I read, I was so happy I read after that disappointing read. This one is the sequel slash finale to this duology. The first book is called Incendinary, which I read back in March and I was really shocked by that ending. So I picked up Illusionary, which also was a May new release and it came out May 11th, I think. Um, Illusionary is a sequel to Incendinary. The thing in here that I loved, I give this one 5 out of 5 stars. The reason why I gave it 5 out of 5 stars is A, female pirates, B, a love, a female female love story in here, C, they wrap the series up perfectly. Um, I'm sad there's only two books because I feel like she can do a trilogy with this one. Um, I kind of wish she did a trilogy, so Zodori Octavio, if you're watching this, please do a trilogy. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this. There is action-packedness in here there was time when it was a bit slow like halfway in the mid halfway through the book it was kind of dragging but other than that I really enjoyed it I literally stood up past midnight reading this book um, and I remember finishing it being like I did it I finished it <laughs> um, but yeah it was such a fast-paced uh, sequel definitely one that didn't disappoint me and this one also came out this year um, so its own voices for the Latinx community and I really enjoyed the audiobook of this one as well. Uh, I don't really want to say much for sequels or for books in general but this is the follow-up novel to um, Incendiary and it said for years she had wielded as a weapon now it's her time to fight back. Um, so yeah I really enjoyed it can't wait to read more by this author and that's all I really can say with the sequel. <laughs> um, then after that, I finally read Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Um, this is the first book in the Last Hour series. This was on my five-star prediction TBR, and it gave me all the Cassandra Clare Shadowhunter feels that I needed it. Um, this was also a five out of five star read for me. It was so fun. I was going to buddy read this with my friend Taylor this month because we finally got our hands on Chain of Iron, which spoiler alert, I'm going to be reading Chain of Iron in June. Um, but I'm so excited to read Chain of Iron after this ending. I do not know how you guys waited a whole year for this sequel. I'm so glad I waited. Um, this one came out last year, I believe. So, and I'm just now finally getting around to reading it. And this was a book I was anticipating a lot and it did not let me down. Again, this one is like a first book in a new series. So we follow everyone from the Infernal Devices along with their kids that they have. So Jim, Tessa, Will, they all have kids now. And so we follow their kids through their journey of being a shadow hunter. Um, my favorite two new character, we follow Cadelia, and she was so strong and such a badass main female, female main character. Um, she grows, she grows up in the Shadowhunter world, so she already knows everything, which is great because it's kind of annoying when they don't know anything about the Shadowhunter world. But Cadelia has parents who are Shadowhunters, so we already get a backstory on her, and we already know everything about what she does and. 
I really don't know how to explain this. Like literally people with summaries are doing so much better than I am. Uh, just know I really enjoyed it. It's such a thick book. Um, and I, it dragged at some points. That was some, that was one thing I didn't like either. Also Magnus Bain returns in here and I was so excited for that. Uh, he's one of my favorite LGBT characters. Um, there's a ship in here that I ship so much, Kit and Ty. They are so amazing. Uh, we meet a few of these characters in here in the Ghost of the Shadow Market uh, bind up. So I definitely suggest reading that bind up before reading this one. But I'm so happy I read this and I cannot wait to talk about this book with my friend Taylor. Taylor, read this book ASAP. Um, so yeah, I give this one 5 out of 5 stars. Love Cassandra Clare. She's one of my favorite authors and I'm so excited to pick up Chain of Iron soon. And then I am down to my final two books that I read this month and one of them is an adult romance novel that I picked up because it's summertime and this was also another May 11th new release and that is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is the same person who wrote Beach Read and I read Beach Read last year during the summertime and loved it and I read this one during the summertime and loved it. I didn't love this one as much as uh, Beach Read because this one was kind of like I don't know how to explain it like I keep saying it drags in every single book but that's how I felt like with every single book it would drag a little bit uh this is such a fast-paced contemporary novel uh there's definitely some smexy time um I can't believe I said that on camera yikes um but I really enjoyed this I give this one four out of five stars this follows our main character named Poppy and it says two best friends ten summer trips one last chance to fall in love so we follow Poppy and Alex, who was super cute. I love this ship. This is one of my favorite OTBs. Um, and I definitely was shipping them throughout the whole book. And when they finally got together, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Um, I also listened to this on audio and it was narrated by Julia Whalen, who is an amazing narrator. So definitely pick up the audio. And I'm so happy because I finally read one of my book of the month picks that I've been saying, oh, I'm gonna read one of my book of the month picks. Never do. But I finally did in the month of May. So yay, one book of the month picked down and like a hundred more to go. I actually don't know how many I have. Probably not a hundred, but you know what I mean. Four out of five stars, such a fun summer read. Definitely check out the audio and it definitely deserves all the hype it's getting. And then the last book in the month of May I've read at the very end of the week, the last week of May, I finally read it and picked it up. Aru Shah and the City of Gold by Roshani Chakshay, the fourth installment of the Pandavar series. I am in love with this middle grade. This is my only middle grade I think I've read. Yeah, my only middle grade that I read this month, but it was such a fun middle grade. I forgot how fun and how much I miss middle grade just because like, I'm almost 22 so I'm like I shouldn't be reading middle grade anymore but they're just so fun and like adventurous this one especially because we follow uh we get a new character Kara Kara I forgot how it was said in the audiobook she was kind of annoying she annoyed me throughout the book anytime she was on the screen or on the pages I just kind of rolled my eyes because she would give these interesting information and I'm like, is that really necessary right now? We don't really need this character. I literally said to myself when I was listening to this audiobook, I was like, this character needs to die. <laughs> like, that sounds so bad of me saying, but like, she was so annoying that I wanted her to die. Like, that is just saying that uh, she's not my favorite character. She's one of our new side characters that we meet in here. And the villains in here, these blue guys, um they were really good the narrator did a creepy voice for them so it was kind of creepy to listen to um i read this because it's one of my most anticipated reads of the year so yeah i really enjoyed this again sequels are hard to talk about but the cover reveal for book five just got revealed i'll leave a uh link to it down below but oh my gosh i cannot wait for book five there's one more book in the series and then it will be completed. I'm so sad I read this one super fast because now I have to wait a whole year for book five. But I'm so happy I love this series and it's definitely one of my new favorite middle grades. I give this one four out of five stars. So yeah, there you have it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of May. I read a total of 12 books. It was a great reading month and I'm having an even better reading month in the month of June. 
I read four books so far. One of them is a library book that I've already returned, so you don't see four books in this stack. But I read four books so far for the month of June, and I'm currently reading my fifth one. And then tomorrow's video would be a June TBR before it gets too late for TBR. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this May wrap-up. Please let me know what you read in the month of May. Have we read any of the same books in the month of May? Let me know down below. Uh, and let me know what your favorite and least favorite book for the month of May. And I'll chat with you guys down in the comments below. Hope you have a great day or night. And be kind to one another. And spread love, not hate. And I'll chat with you guys down in the comments below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Turn your notification on so you don't miss any new videos coming from me soon. And with that long outro, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.